Okay, I'm recording this video because I want to practice a speech that I'm giving next week. And here I want to practice the delivery of the speech. I want to listen back to it so that I can see if I sound stupid or if I'm making a lot of verbal mistakes. I need to avoid the ums, the ah, uh, the uhs, the pauses, things like that. I want to also make sure my body language is... You know, I don't exactly know what I'm looking for, but essentially I don't want to shift my weight a lot, things like that. Probably most importantly is the time. I have to make sure that my speech is under eight minutes, which you would think would be easy, but it's not, considering all the requirements that I have to hit. Now, the timer won't start till I uh, have completed sort of my intro, so we'll pretend that we'll pretend there's a class here in front of me, and I'm basically saying, you know, hello everyone, my name's David, everybody in class knows me, so this is kind of silly, but anyway, once I get going, the uh, the person with the timer will start. They probably won't even start till I get about four or five seconds into it, but I'll go ahead and start it right away. So how much do you think we spend on NASA, and do you think it's too much? The U.S. government certainly seems to think so, because they cut NASA's budget every year. And why does any of this even matter? The topic matters because we all use technology that was invented by NASA. And here in Central Florida, NASA, of course, is in our own backyard. My credentials for this topic are that I've been interested in space all of my life. I have watched countless hours of video documentaries about NASA and about space in general. I've read How NASA Learned to Fly in Space by David M. Harland. And I've actually recorded over 400 videos about orbital mechanics and have uploaded those to my own YouTube channel. Today, I will persuade you that NASA is underfunded by telling you about several technologies that were invented by NASA, by telling you how much our current way of life depends on space, and by explaining the economic benefit of NASA. Technology invented by NASA has led to the creation of several medical Devices that have enhanced the quality of life for some people and have even saved the lives for others. One life-saving technology was the ventricular assist device. This product came about as a collaboration between NASA and Micromed Technology Incorporated. Now, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute states that a ventricular assist device is a mechanical pump that's used to support heart function and blood flow in people who have weakened hearts. Now NASA's involvement in this technology may seem a little odd, so you might wonder how NASA's expertise could possibly have anything to do with heart function. Well, NASA was involved because of their experience with simulating fluid flow through rocket engines. And according to researchers, the blood flow through our veins is actually very similar to fluid flowing through a rocket engine. Go figure. NASA also pioneered digital signal processing, which was used to generate computer-enhanced pictures of the moon during the lunar landings. And this technology has gone on to be used in hospitals for CT scans and MRIs. And I have personally benefited from this technology as I underwent many CT scans before and after my double lung transplant. Infrared sensors were developed by NASA for the measurement of the temperature of distant celestial objects. And this technology led to the development of an optical sensor thermometer. And according to NASA.gov, this method of taking temperature avoids contact with mucous membranes, virtually eliminating the possibility of cross infection and permits rapid temperature measurement of newborn, critically ill, or incapacitated patients. NASA also invented or was involved in the development of many other technologies which have improved quality of life. One such technology was LASIK eye surgery. Now, this technology was around even before the space program existed, but it was very experimental and it was actually quite dangerous. But once NASA got a hold of it, they perfected it. And for everyone who wears eyeglasses, you can thank NASA for inventing scratch-resistant lenses. Another invention by NASA that has changed the lives uh, for many deaf people is intracochlear implants. NASA also invented many technologies which have improved safety and well-being. 
the fire resistant technology used for heat shields has been used in other industries. When NASA needed a way to land a probe on the surface of Mars, they contracted with tire manufacturer Goodyear to produce a fibrous material which would allow parachutes to be deployed at very high velocity. That fibrous material is now common in radial tires. NASA invented a water filtration system using carbon filters and silver ions, and this filtering system is now commonplace all around the world. No discussion about NASA would be complete without mentioning all the technology up in space. NASA's satellite program has over 200 communications satellites in orbit, which allow us to send and receive communication around the world every day. And the GPS technology that we use uh, was actually not invented by NASA, but the satellites that allow GPS to work wouldn't be in space if NASA didn't put them there. Finally, there is the great unknown. According to NASA's website, their vision is to reach for new heights and reveal the unknown so that what we do and learn will benefit all humankind. And to that end, NASA has had more success than any other space agency on Earth. NASA has landed several rovers on Mars. They have sent probes to study Mercury, Saturn, and Jupiter. And NASA is the only space agency that has put a man on the moon. Now that I've shared with you a tiny glimpse about all the things NASA has done, I want to get to the main idea of this discussion, which is that NASA is underfunded. Normally, when we think of taxpayer dollars going to a government agency, we think of it as an expense, and rightfully so. However, with NASA, we should think of it as an investment and not an expense. In an article by Jerome Schnee, written in 2008, he says, each dollar spent on R&D for the U.S. space program returns an average of slightly over $7. In a more recent article by U.S. economy expert Kimberly Amadeo, she writes, a report by the Space Foundation estimated that the space-related activities contributed $180 billion to the economy in 2005. This means that each dollar of NASA spending is a catalyst for $10 of economic benefit. With all the economic benefit, the logical thing to do would be to double or triple the amount of money that NASA receives. Unfortunately, the U.S. government only ever seems to want to cut spending in areas of education and technology. As a result, NASA's budget has been cut to the point where it now represents less than one half of one penny on the dollar. So I want to talk about how you can help. One way you can help is to be informed. And I hope through this speech here today, you now know more than you did before the start of this class. The second way you can help is by keeping other people informed. So the next time you hear someone say something stupid like, wow, what a waste of money when we launch a rocket, you now know that it's not a waste of money, but all the money spent on that launch will have a direct economic benefit. You can also visit www.pennyfornasa.org and sign the petition so that uh, senators and governors and the like will think twice about you know, how they want to vote when it comes time to uh, handle NASA's budget. In conclusion, considering all that NASA has given us, and considering that every dollar that NASA gets comes back to our economy by an average of 1,000%, I hope you are persuaded that NASA is indeed underfunded. Let's see how I did on my time. 15 seconds to spare, it's not bad. Wouldn't mind having a bit more time than that to spare though. Still feel like there's more I can improve and some of these points I'm not 100% comfortable with, they're not exactly. It's just that it's it's so hard. I, I have I have to have a requirement of cramming 18 points into this speech, and if I don't get all 18 of them in, then I didn't meet all the requirements. And cramming that much stuff into an eight-minute speech is hard to do, without kind of cutting corners and you know making each point. You know, I I don't really give the attention to to all the points that I want. Because if I did, it would just it would take too long, you know, to give all the correct verbal attributions and everything. Anyway. <laughs>